You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. Right before we start this podcast, I just wanted to make people aware that in the middle of this podcast, the word chidosh is used. And the translation for that in this context it means a shocker. Something very shocking is going to be said. Something very shocking. That's what the word chidosh means. So when you hear it, although it was not translated in the podcast itself, so I'm just letting people know. Um, hope you enjoy. Take care. Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, March 7th, and we are in the midst of a snowstorm, which is as complex as usual. Now, let me explain to you what's going on over here, here in the Chicago area. Probably as we speak, we had snow that overspread the area earlier today. That snow, according to the streetlight view, has turned into drizzle or freezing drizzle. And the question is why? Now, this was in the forecast. Now, usually you would think, you know why? It's because there must be warm air above the cold air. So the snow melts into droplets and then it freezes, but it doesn't have enough time to freeze before hitting the ground. If it had enough time, time to freeze before hitting the ground that would be called sleet but it doesn't have enough time to freeze before hitting the ground so we call it freezing rain okay that's a nice theory uh, that's what it says in all of the science books in elementary school the only problem with that theory is that it's not correct that might be true by freezing rain, but in the situation today, we have freezing drizzle, and that's not the reason why we have freezing drizzle. This is a different type of a freezing drizzle. The freezing drizzle we have today, this is going to be a big, big chiddush to many of you. A big chiddush, it was even, it's a big chiddush, uh, is because of the following. So, rain freezes when it's 32 degrees. So in all of the textbooks and everything, it always says that the precipitation that forms in the upper atmosphere, if it's below 32 degrees, the precipitation is going to form as snow. Okay? But the truth of the matter is that's not correct. It actually has to be 18 degrees. It has to be 18 degrees before the precipitation can form as snow. Because it goes like this, it needs ice nuclei. You need to have s some type of particle, or in this case, some type of ice particle. The initiation process, the ice has to be 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Once you have that, so then all of these other particles could, could freeze and stick onto it to create a snowflake. But if you don't have that little part, that ice nuclei, we're going to have to look up the terminologies uh, to, you can look it up to get a better idea or maybe we'll have more on this at a later podcast on a later podcast then you do not get a snowflake so how do you get a snowflake why was it snowing and why did it stop snowing this is what happened when the snow clouds went deep tall into the atmosphere so then the top part of the clouds, there was precipitation forming in the top part of the clouds. There's also precipitation that potentially could have been forming on the bottom part of the cloud. The clouds were saturated. The clouds are saturated. That's one major variable needed to produce precipitation. It's not the only variable. You need some other variables as well. But that was a major variable. So we had snowflakes. When you have the top cloud saturated, so the higher up you go, the colder the temperatures are. Temperatures actually drop 5.5 degrees every 1,000 feet you go up. So the temperatures actually were below 18 degrees. Not only that, they were below, they were even colder than that. Significantly colder than that. Some say it also has to be significantly colder than that. 18 degrees also, it's not a guarantee. Sometimes it really does have to be colder than that. Uh, sometimes even at 18, we, f we fail to get snow. So snow was falling and that was that. Then a dry slot moved into the area. A dry slot is associated a lot of times with a warm nose somehow associated it's part of every storm system the dry slot was forecast to move over the chicago area any place that got this dry slot now you would think if you got a dry slot in the upper atmosphere that means it's going to be dry down here on the surface well that could be could be but in this case it could also be that it won't be 
because all the dry slot did is it caused the top cloud to dissipate. But we still have the bottom cloud, and the bottom cloud is still saturated. So there's still a pretty good chance that precipitation is going to form in the bottom cloud as well. The only thing is, is that the bottom cloud is lower down, so the air temperature is above 18 degrees. And if the air temperature is above 18 degrees, we cannot get any snowflakes. So it goes like this: if the snowflakes were already falling from the upper part of the cloud, so then when it falls through the bottom part of the cloud, that water. The, the the water vapor and the water droplets, the ice particles, they freeze on to that snowflake, making the snowflake larger. We never would have gotten a mixture of rain and snow in such a scenario. But now that the snow has stopped falling, all we have is the bottom part of the cloud. So now we have what's called super cooled water droplets. Super cooled water droplets are water droplets that are well below 32 degrees. Temperatures are probably in the low 20s, but But in order for water to freeze, there also has to be some type of a something, some some mushes in the middle. It could be a tiny dust particle. It could be anything, but it has to be there. And if it's not there, the water will remain water. According to the National Weather Service, this remains true all the way to 37 degrees below zero. But it has been seen in labs before that the water remains water all the way up to 42 degrees below zero. So, we have super cooled water. All it has to do is come in contact with something, and it will freeze instantly. That's freezing drizzle. This is the difference between freezing drizzle and freezing rain. It's a very significant difference to me. To me, it's a very significant difference. Freezing rain is the classic thing everybody learns about in school. You have in that all those pictures, the diagrams. The snow falls from the sky. It falls into a warm layer. It melts. Then it falls into a shallow, cold layer, and then it freezes. Either it freezes before reaching the surface, in which case it's called sleet, or it freezes after reaching the surface, in which case it's called freezing rain. Now the question is, does that freezing rain freeze on contact? So sometimes it does. Now. The reason why it does is because of a process、uh, called evaporative cooling. So it actually could be that the water temperature is actually below 32 by the time it reaches the ground. So even in that process, it's possible for the precipitation to freeze on contact. In fact, you could have freezing precipitation even when the temperature is 34 because of evaporative cooling. That's especially true if we're in a dry air mass. If we're in a dry air mass, a lot of times the evaporation, the precipitation evaporates before reaching the ground, or at least it shrinks. But in any case, in general, freezing drizzle I think is a more significant event. I think, and the ice storms that I've been in have been situations they, with the weather conditions were freezing mist. Baltimore gets them a lot. The freezing mist ice storms turned out to be an inch, even more than an inch of solid ice. Very, very major stuff. So that's one of the things we have going on right now is this complicated freezing drizzle, which makes snowfall so difficult to forecast. The other thing going on right now that's important to mention is that ice is slippery. <laughs> What temperature does ice reach its slipperiest? So some say it's 20 degrees, some say it's 19 degrees. Once it's under 19 degrees. The ice book,、uh, takes on a form where it loses its slipperiness. At least it's not as slippery. And I wonder if there's a connection between the ice particles in the sky, which we said was 18 degrees, in order for the the initial freezing, in order to produce the initial icicle. It has to be 18 degrees, and then after that, we could we could have a snowflake. Even and this snowflake will get larger and larger. The more the more water vapor gets added onto it, the more moisture that gets added onto it, provided the temperatures are under 32. But that initial the initial stage has to be 18. Sometimes it even has to be less. So, is there a connection between that? Is there something something that happens to ice? At that temperature, there's a certain level of 
frozenness or something and maybe that's also we could maybe that's also um manifests itself in the fact that ice is not as slippery once the temperature is below 19 degrees and 19 degrees it reaches its slipperiest it's also possible the article was not worded exactly it could be that it's saying that under 19 the ice isn't really so slippy slippery not that at 19 it reaches its slipperiest point maybe really it's slippery 19 and up and it's not slippery under 19 i don't know that's something has to be looked into because ultimately the slipperiest ice i would think is the ice which has rain on top but there are those that say that all ice has a thin glazed layer of liquid on top that's something which would have to be discussed at a later time okay everyone uh the next topic that is very deserving of being discussed is this thursday night friday friday night snowstorm we have a low pressure system we have a lot of stuff coming together and the national weather service forecast discussion is has spent an unusually large amount of time discussing this in their forecast discussion because there is potential with this one there is there is how could there not how the, the amount of energy in the environment today is just mind boggling we in march i'm talking about march we have this is march but the polar night there are areas where the polar night it's still night so you have the polar freezer is still on but you have the hot sun from the south it's mamish coming up at full force we see it we already spoke about how temperatures went into the low hundreds a couple weeks ago in texas and we're seeing more and more of those 80s and 90s with dew points some of the charts showed dew points in the mid 70s yesterday i couldn't find any city which had dew points in the mid 70s but when you look at the map it shows a shaded area of 70s i don't know why it shows that because i can't find any city which actually had those dew points but i didn't look into florida florida doesn't count uh i'm speaking about texas florida has warm water all year round so it's significant in florida too but it's more significant in texas if we can get the dew points into the solid dew points into the mid 70s in texas that's a more symbolic and it's a, both a simon and a seba that we're headed in the right direction but dew points is a form of energy it's not just temperature that's a form of energy dew point as well as a form of energy and the main thing we're looking at in a snowstorm is not moisture maybe other meteorologists disagree but from the research i did it's the low pressure it's the low pressure you could have tons of moisture the snow just doesn't fall you could have an alberta clipper a moisture starved system it doesn't produce much but the snow does fall so but this friday we're getting a combination of the two you can look on the weather map and the european computer model and you see for the first time this winter perhaps to me you see a solid low pressure system develop it's clear on the map that it's strengthening and it it's it's something that that the east coast has been getting all along but the midwest we've gotten plenty of snow but to actually see the source being a solid low pressure system not from a gradient not from gradient not relatively low pressure which you know maybe it doesn't really matter but to actually see a, an intensifying storm of 29.4 20 starting off at 29.6 and then intensifying 29.4 and then 29.2 and 29.2 is the criteria for a foot of snow at the bullseye on the lower end i think that's a 12 to 18 inch bullseye when it's 29.2 for the east coast that's when it's mixed with the atlantic ocean waters exactly what's going to be happening here is something that people should stay tuned to because we have other computer models taking the low pressure up the coast in most likelihood we're going to see two areas of low pressure perhaps three but the one on friday into shabbos will have one going through the midwest possibly a little bit too far south for the chicago area that's what it looks like to me but we're still several days out or at least a little bit too far south for chicago to be getting the bullseye of it chicago might not be in the heaviest part and then on the east coast we usually do get 
get a second a secondary area of low pressure which develops off the North Carolina coast and that you can clearly see on the map in fact that one according to the European computer model is developing into mind-boggling intensity we're talking about hurricane strength it's not just going under the 29s it goes to 28.7 28.4 27.9 this thing is mamish it's it's a bama bama genesis that's the definite it's gonna by um by the evening by one of these evenings i it it takes upon the characteristics characteristics of Obama Genesis is something which drops one millibar per hour for 24 hours. Thank you for listening. I wish everybody a good day. I uh, just summary here. In the Chicago area, we are under a winter weather advisory due to freezing rain. Areas north of Chicago are under a winter weather advisory due to snow. Total storm accumulations expected to be one to four inches. The next storm expected to hit here is Thursday, Friday, or Shabbos, uh, either one wave or two waves of low pressure. We're right now waiting actually for the second half of the storm, which will be coming in a, a little in a couple hours from now, probably at eight o'clock or so uh, for today. We'll, we will see a couple more inches of snow. A lot of it might melt though because of the warmer temperatures and the solar radiation in March from the high sun angle, but then we have one wave of low pressure coming in perhaps Thursday into Friday, but a more significant one Friday into Shabbos, which the Chicago area might miss. We have to stay tuned to that one because that one, that one in particular could be really significant from what I saw based upon the low pressure and low pressure is the main thing. Low pressure is the main thing that we're looking at.